um, who we're mostly seeing at a, at a massive increase is Aboriginal women. Mm. So in the last decade, we've seen an increase of 56.8% of Aboriginal women in the last 10 years mm. in our prison population, as opposed to non-Indigenous men, which is around 3%. So we actually, it clearly paints a picture, and I don't talk about statistics and data a lot because I think we need to talk about the experience of women who are criminalised and imprisoned. But when you just hear those figures, it's actually mind-blowing and really clearly shows us about how fundamentally racist and sexist um, the system, the prison industrial complex is, and how they're targeting Aboriginal women. Because you cannot tell me that non-Indigenous men are committing less crimes um, because I believe there'd be more crimes, but they're actually not going to prison. Mm. So we see courts, you know, police charge, criminalise, and then the courts incarcerating. The, the structure of the prison environment, like most um, state structures, are fundamentally racist mm -hmm. and sexist and homophobic. So we see all that played out, um, all, and all that stigma um, mm. that's perpetrated against women and. Um, uh, so we see a lot of Aboriginal women languishing, for example, in detention units, in isolation units, solitary confinements, mm. um, and a lot will be written or saying they have mental illness, where I actually believe that the majority of Aboriginal women, especially in the northern part of Australia, where Aboriginal women come in from communities who are criminalised in prison, have a brain injury, but they're actually never assessed to having a brain injury because of the violence that's been perpetrated against them on communities. Um, and so they're deemed to have mental illness medicated, so chemically restrained, while they're in prison. Um, we mm. see uh, also in the northern parts of Australia, uh, the women that come, Aboriginal women that come in from communities, um, over 90% can't read and write, mm. which is actually a shocking indictment on this country that Aboriginal, adult, adult Aboriginal women can't read and write. Mm. Um, so therefore what we see, say for in towns and women's prison, they run three literacy and numeracy programs for one hour, three days a week. Um, now, women can choose to come to that or not choose to come to that. But I mean, they're fundamentally behind the eight ball because here's adult women and most of them have children. And so, you know, you can imagine that those children aren't being educated. So it's not about advocating for a, a you know, a classic education system because the education system pretty well fundamentally fails many mm. children, um, but obviously it fundamentally fails Aboriginal children, and in this case, Aboriginal women who have grown up and can't read and write. And we all know that education gives us fundamental choices in life um, and, and broadens our choices mm. in life.